Yeah, sure. Yeah, cos that's what you associate the Taliban with. Freedom for everyone to live their best life. I wonder how these guys rose to prominence. How did they get the guns and rose to prominence in uh, the Civil War? How did that happen? Does anyone know? Like in the original Afghan Civil War, um, what was it there? There was a... Shit, I think there was a USSR-aligned communist government that was doing, like, Islamic pogroms, okay? So, fair. Um, so much so that even the USSR itself was like, bro, you need to chill the fuck out. You need to cut it with this whole, like, anti-Islam uh, shit. And then the, the, the Sigma Grindset uh, fundies fought back. You know, the, the... Was it... Was it... Did they drop ship copies of Hustlers University? Is that... How did they fight back? Because, like, the USSR went in, uh, they had helicopters. Shit, did they fucking... How did they... How did they take down helicopters? Oh, that's right, dude. Fuck. Oh, we... We did that. We helped... We built the... the uh, we built the... We used the legitimate resentment that people had uh, to our advantage and uh, beefed up the brave Mujahideen. Uh, offered them stinger missiles and uh, numerous kinds of small arms, um, and then, then they, uh, yeah, they then they ended up winning. Yeah, top G, more like top jihad, exactly. Life. <laughs> also, for all it's worth, I don't think losing the right to drive bumper cars or go to the zoo was at the top of anyone's list of concerns <laughs> when the Taliban took over. It's akin to the Pope saying, "Don't worry, everyone, Catholics are still allowed to use pogo sticks." Okay, great. <laughs> My man, I love when people say their army was trained by the Pakistanis. You're right. How, how dare I make that distinction? You know, it's like thinking that uh, two different brands of, of cleaners, like cleaning supplies, are not owned by the same fucking corporation. Oh, shit, dude. Never mind. Oh, you fucking damn, bro. Pakistanis? Never mind. T totally. That's I never I never would have guessed you. You did. You got me. That was a totally different different situation but to be honest that's not the main issue people have with the catholic church right now and while the taliban is not actually a monolith different regional leaders rule with different degrees of severity i do still feel comfortable saying everything's very much not enjoyable for everyone in afghanistan right now for starters there have been brutal reprisals against u.s allies and former afghan government employees nearly 500 of whom were killed or forcibly disappeared during the taliban's first six months in power and on a much bigger level the taliban's taken an absolute sledgehammer to women's rights for all the many legitimate criticisms of America's occupation, women did make huge gains there. In 2001, there were few, if any, girls in school. And by 2020, girls made up roughly 40% of all students. That same year, Afghanistan's parliament had a higher percentage of women than the US Congress did. But now, they've essentially gone back to zero. But much more than that, Taliban decrees have tried to control nearly every aspect of women's lives, ordering that they shouldn't leave their homes unless necessary. Okay, again, um, I I'm not going to sit here and act like life under uh, American occupation was better, okay? Life under o American occupation was only a little bit better, certainly, in the green zone, okay, Kabul and the like, while... That same occupation was like bombing the shit out of every fucking area and still continues to do so from time to time. Um, but not only that, but also we're literally working with the same Taliban leaders half the fucking time. Uh, only until uh, those dudes would end up shooting the, the U.S. military members that uh, were there to, I don't know, protect the fucking poppy uh, fields. But also... Once again, this notion is like, this is, this is kind of like a fucking, uh, it, this is doing propaganda for American imperialism. If you don't set the standard back to a time when Afghanistan uh, had some level of autonomy, but was punished for, not for uh, its like anti-Islamist attitude, punished for its uh, allegiances to the USSR, you're just wrong. Like, you're not telling the full story. It's crazy. I, I, I'm sorry. Like, you can't talk about Afghanistan without, without going further back in history. And that only women who can't be replaced by men will be allowed to keep working. In fact, one of the only areas women can work 
is in healthcare, because there are some situations where men aren't allowed to treat women as patients. This midwife, for example, is still working in a hospital, but she is furious about... Yeah, I mean, here, I mean, this is the same fucking picture over and over again, all over the fucking place, but... Anywhere you go in MENA, and also in Asia as well, anywhere you go, the same story plays itself out. 60s, 70s, you got... If you're talking exclusively from a very narrow framework of, like, women's liberation, you know, Western adjacent values as signifiers of women's, liber uh, women's liberation, then yeah, Iran has the same shit, Egypt has the same shit, Afghanistan has the same shit, all of these fucking countries, Iraq has the same shit. Every single one of these fucking uh, uh, MENA countries and Afghanistan as well has exact, the exact same imagery that you can point to. It's just the truth. These are countries but prior to U.S. involvement. You can't blame the U.S. for all of Afghanistan's problems right now. It's true the U.S. likes to participate in proxy wars, Afghanistan included, but the Korean War was a proxy war between U.S. and China, and South Korea was able to make progress. Some problems in Afghanistan go back centuries. Hmm, interesting that you mentioned that while I'm literally showing you Afghanistan, uh, uh, you know, post-50s, and destroying the narrative that you're trying to set. But also very interesting that you brought up fucking South Korea and North Korea. I wonder why... North Korea is in this fucking dire, desolate circumstances that they're in, even though in the immediate aftermath, they were able to recover better than South Korea in the aftermath of the Korean War, despite having the, the you know, uh, imperialist forces destroy, bomb, possibly even use, like, germ warfare, um, and destroy 80% of the fucking buildings in North Korea. That's a fucking ridiculous take, man. That is an absolutely preposterous take. North Korea's death and destruction came at the hands of the destruction of the USSR. When their only fucking, when their, when their only uh, uh, opening into the fucking real world and markets was through uh, the USSR. Every single city, 40% to 90% of every single city in North Korea was reduced to rubble. Also, you know, South Korea's development came uh, at the cost of having a military dictatorship and, and, and being another American client state. <sighs> They'll allow you to develop if you are America's dog, okay? The idea that you can't blame the top global hegemonic power for all the death and destruction that it caused is silly as fuck. Such a bullshit narrative to spin from these freak West stories. They don't see economic situation, only no headscarf, no skirt, no liberation. No, but like, that's why I said even from a hyper narrow and very specific form of like, Western adjacent values being a form of like female liberation or women's liberation. Uh, even on that front, they lose. Even on that front, they are uh, completely incorrect because it's not like Afghanistan was always this way. What do I always say? What do I always fucking say? Countries that get invaded by imperial powers always are going to turn reactionary, right wing, hyper nationalistic. Okay doesn't matter if it's Russia invading Ukraine that is going to cause an incredible amount of nationalist uh, uh, uprisings. doesn't matter if it's uh, fucking Afghanistan. This is what happens when America involves themselves in your internal affairs. What about Vietnam, though? Vietnam was a victory. What do you mean? One of the few examples of successfully purging fucking... Uh, successfully purging uh, imperial, uh, imperialist forces. And also... Not only was it an example of successfully purging imperialist forces, but, like, Vietnam still suffered. It still suffers. Drastically. Anyway, so here. There you go. I just wanted to show you this so you understand. Um, anyway, where were we? Oh, we were talking about South Korea, too. Which is really fun. Because didn't the current president of South Korea literally decide that uh, the, the financial crimes... Didn't the uh, current president of South Korea, the new one, the incel one... Uh, uh, decide that the uh, the the fucking oligarchs of South Korea from uh, Samsung and and the other fucking company, which is like the fifth largest one, I forget the name of it. I don't know which one it was, but uh, he just absolved them of their crimes. Uh, I think what was it, bribery? One of them was bribery. And he just pardoned the Samsung family and said and said he he pardoned the Samsung family to you know move forward, not backwards. Uh, anyway, that's that's great. Let's continue. What she sees happening to her country.
The Taliban cannot ban me from working in the hospital because they know that it is needed. I humbly request the Taliban do not meddle in women's rights to education and employment. Otherwise, they are amputating one arm from the body of society. Our societies are made of two pillars, a pillar of men and another pillar of women. How can you run your life one-sided? You can't run a society on a pillar of just men. I mean, we've tried. For thousands of years, we have tried. But look where it's got us. We have a global pandemic, the planet is on fire, the Babysitter's Club is cancelled despite unparalleled critical success, <laughs> and the world's richest man is a ventriloquist dummy from hell. Let's <laughs> maybe lean on that one pillar a little bit less. <laughs> and things are getting worse, because in March, the Taliban went back on a promise that they made after they took over and announced that girls would be prevented from receiving a secondary school education in most of the country. Now, drew widespread condemnation in Afghanistan, including from many Taliban members. But the leadership pushed back, claiming that it's just temporary and arguing, among other things, that they simply needed more time to decide on a school uniform for teenage girls, which is clearly total bullshit. <laughs> Besides, for an organisation so concerned with virtue and purity, taking months to brainstorm a schoolgirl uniform you like is objectively the single perviest thing you can do. <laughs> so women in particular have lost a great deal in the last year, but on top of that, the whole country has faced a cascading series of humanitarian crises. The UN has estimated that as much as 97% of the population is at risk of sinking below the poverty line. And part of that is due to a series of natural disasters from an ongoing severe drought that's hit around 80% of the country, devastating food production, to a massive earthquake in June and flooding just this month. But that's been exacerbated by the fact that this is all falling on a brand new Taliban government that is in no way equipped to take it on. The Taliban now need to shift from being a jihadist insurgency to a ruling group. For 20 years, you've built an organization that- What the fuck do you mean? They were though. They already were. They were. And then they became a jihadist. Well, they were always a jihadist uh, uh, insurgency, I guess. But yeah, but like, what, what do you mean? America invaded Afghanistan. Not a good one. I know. I'm not saying it's a good one, but they were. And then America came in and pushed them aside, instituted a public government that was bullshit, that was horrible and bad. And then they turn around. Afghanistan isn't in the Middle East, Hassan. It is in South Asia. Calling us Mena is wrong. And we are in Asia and we are Asian. Yikes. Okay. That's why I always say Mena and Asia. Okay. I know. Also, shut the fuck up, dumbass. Yikes, he says. Jesus Christ. It was designed to fight and you motivated people to engage in suicide bombings. They don't turn into people who are government officials overnight. Yeah, of course not. A militant insurgency group is pretty low on the list of people that you want leading a government right around the Hells Angels, the Manson family, and Ron DeSantis. <laughs> and to be a million percent clear, I am not suggesting that the US occupation was a perfect magic wonderland. It was awful in its own ways, not least, having to live under the specter of hellfire being rained down from flying unmanned death machines every day. Our continued presence there was untenable, but the exact circumstances of our departure have to a significant degree made things substantially worse. Because we've made a series of decisions, some of them understandable, that have had huge ramifications for the Afghan people. And let's start with the Taliban government itself. When it took over, many of its members were already sanctioned by the US because we list the Taliban as a specially designated terrorist group. So we also literally took, I mean, Donald Trump blew the fucking leader of the Taliban. Like they took him out of Pakistani prison to make a deal with him. And that deal was supposed to feature the current Afghan government. And the Taliban literally said, no, we don't give a fuck about the current Afghan government. Uh, the Afghanistan is ours. And you know what Donald Trump did? He said, yeah, you're right. My bad. And literally just cut out the fucking Afghan government from the deal. So this notion that it's like uh, anything other than like Donald Trump and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and Joe Brandon's doing is, is silly. But also, in some ways, there was no way out of this. You know what I mean? So suddenly, those pre-existing sanctions apply to at least part of the Taliban government. Take Saraduddin Haqqani. The, the State Department currently has a $10 million reward 
out for information leading to his arrest. But you should know, he's the current acting interior minister there. So guess what, State Department? I found him! <laughs> Can you mail me my $10 million now, please? <laughs> Don't worry, I spend my money very wisely. <laughs> so, individuals in the Taliban government are sanctioned, which effectively means the whole government is, making it nearly impossible for banks, businesses and charities to operate there, which is a massive problem. Especially because 75% of the former Afghan government's budget came from foreign aid and grants. 75%! That was the money that, among other things, paid the salaries for vital government services like teachers and public sector employees. And all that aid disappeared almost immediately. As one expert has said, no country in the world could withstand a sharp cutoff of that aid. And it's affected everything in, in healthcare. For instance, the World Bank and other organizations immediately froze $600 million in aid, which left doctors in a very difficult position. This state hospital in the heart of Kabul has not received funding since the Taliban takeover. We don't have any medicine here. We had antibiotics, painkillers and vitamins here, but it's empty now. What's your budget now in, in total for the department? Uh, for the total departments, uh, we didn't have. Just only for our salary we have budget. For uh, other uh, items, we didn't have any budget. So you mean your budget is zero? Uh, budget is zero, yeah. Yeah, zero. It is hard to imagine how a hospital can even function with a budget of zero, unless every exam room is just a paper bag and a sign that says, yell what hurts into this bag, <laughs> then leave. And it gets even worse because the US also froze Afghanistan's central bag assets held in America, amounting to around $7 billion. Now, that is money typically used to do things like keep the currency stable, finance imports, and provide money to the banking system. The US froze those assets to prevent the Taliban from accessing them, but that also kneecapped the country's entire banking system especially as Afghanistan doesn't have the ability to print its own currency. All of this led to a literal... I mean, they stole the money. They're, they're also sitting on every fucking dime that the Afghan government has. It's their money. And the United States just took it, seized it, and are not giving it back. Why? Because the Taliban are terror leaders. Okay, but you gave them Afghanistan. It's a country with millions of fucking people living in it. If you give them the country, and then you turn around and say, nah, that's my money now. Okay, which, by the way, that number, of, that number is so comically low, too. I mean, America are the terror leaders, yes, and they are the most successful terrorists, for the record. Yeah, uh, the Biden administration won't release any of the roughly $7 billion in foreign assets held by Afghanistan's central bank on U.S. soil after the killing of al-Qaeda's leader in Kabul, according to U.S. officials. Just insane. Just an insane concept to, to think about. Like, we're just like, nah, we're not going to give you the money. $7 billion is, like, comical, too. Federal cash shortage where even Afghans who do have money in the bank can't access it. So there have been massive lines and waits just to get money out. At some banks, withdrawing cash has reportedly taken three days or more. And that has brought the country to an unusual state of affairs. This is a unique humanitarian crisis. This is a situation where food is technically available, but there isn't enough liquidity in the economy and enough availability of paper currency to purchase food. Food which is available. And that is awful. Food... But no Will the Taliban use it for their people or put it back in the military budget? What do you think? Bro, $7 billion. What are they going to buy? What do you mean? $7 billion is nothing. What, what do you think they're going to buy? Also, it's their money. You don't get to fucking say like, oh, you can't use it like this. Uh, you can't use it this way or that way. Like, it's their money. What the fuck do you mean? Dude, I hate the minds of Americans. It's it just like, it, it is so incredibly frustrating to sit there literally in fucking Connecticut in a nice little mansion and just say, well, the Afghan people, I don't know if they deserve their own fucking money. Maybe they'll buy guns with it. What the fuck do you mean? Money to buy it with. It's like a lyric from Alanis Morissette's ironic in that it's fundamentally not ironic at all. For the record, that $7 billion, like I said, is comically low. It's just the first step. You know what I mean? It's just like immediately a crime against humanity. Like the fact that we still have it. At all, and I'm sure Dave Coulier is still somehow to blame. <laughs> Things are very grim in Afghanistan. Its population is young. Nearly half are under the age of 15. And UNICEF has warned that over a million severely malnourished children will be at risk of death without emergency treatment this year. And because many Afghans have nowhere to turn for food or for money, families have been forced to make some harrowing choices. 40-year-old Ghulam Hazrat sold his kidney for around $2,300. 
گذاهیم مسیر را بچه وجدان و قبول نکت کبرم گشت گذاهی چیزی بکنیم مثل مرد و پناه خدا مرد مجبور دکتر مریم کل خود دیزی دیجی در بدر تا مدتی بردارم دکتر باشم اشکام سیر باشم. It's true. He sold his kidney to feed his kids. A desperate decision that you can make precisely once. That's actually an increasingly common decision in Afghanistan. And it's not just that. Families are also selling some of their children so that they can feed the others, which is just unimaginably heartbreaking. So clearly, the people of Afghanistan are in dire need of help. And the current president has, at times, been alarmingly blithe about the situation there. Do I feel badly what's happening to, uh, as a consequence of the incompetence of the Taliban? Yes, I do. But I feel badly... What the fuck do you mean? Like, the, the incompetence of the Taliban? What incompetence? You, you took their money. Gave them the country, and you took their money. A country that could only fucking exist, uh, a, a, a country that could only exist with NGO help regardless. And that NGO help was another arm of America's, I guess, soft power that works alongside its imperialist hard power. This is why we always talk about fucking NGOs this way, here at least on the Hasanabi broadcast. That they are not trustworthy humanitarian institutions. They might have like legitimately empathetic people working within them, but ultimately they are effectively another arm of the American military machine. Also about the fistulas that are taking place in Eastern Congo. I feel badly about a whole range of things around the world that we can't solve every problem. Okay, first, I hate to be a Marion the librarian, but you don't feel badly, you feel bad. <laughs> Feel is a linking verb, and you're modifying- I agree, Doc Hi. about borders is such a fuck. Man, shut the fuck up. Like, why do you have to go to that? Like, why? Why is that the first one you go to? The first one you go to is the one that got fucking lasered by Obama's drone strikes in, in, um, where the fuck was it? In Kunduz. Like, obviously not every fucking NGO is suspicious, okay? Trying it incorrectly, Marion out. <laughs> but, the second, it's pretty disheartening to see our official foreign policy boil down to, sorry, champ, can't win them all. Especially when the US is so directly responsible for so many problems in Afghanistan and in Eastern Congo, by the way, but that is a different story. Now, the Biden administration will point out that it's begun issuing sanctions exemptions to allow the free flow of some humanitarian aid. And it sent hundreds of millions in relief to Afghanistan more than any other country, which is absolutely true. They've done that in the face of stiff opposition from some on the right who argue in pretty strong terms against any kind of assistance and for one particular reason. Obviously, humanitarian suffering. NGOs are non-governmental organizations. And all over this planet, right? Uh, I, I don't, I'm not in favor of giving money that I'm pretty confident will end up in the hands of the Taliban. We should not give them one red cent mm. until such time as we can demonstrate that they have actually done what they said they would do, which is to separate themselves from terror. Mike Pompeo and deep fake Blake Shelton here are clearly <laughs> assholes. Although I will say for even non assholes, it is natural to be concerned about the prospect of US aid money going to the Taliban. But a couple of things you should know. For years now, charities have been able to find ways to work with, through, or around the Taliban to help ordinary Afghan citizens. They have- I wonder why they can't- To do that, because even when the US was there, the Taliban effectively still controlled large parts of the country. And for people at some of those groups, like the Afghanistan director at the International Rescue Committee, the fact that they are financially constrained from helping people now is pretty- Man, that's crazy. So America not only is like uh, not offering them, America not only is not uh, allowing Afghanistan to get its money back that it has seized, but they're also stopping the NGOs from working alongside, um, you know, uh, working uh, uh, outside of the confines of the Taliban, but still working at the behest of Afghan citizens. Hmm. Too frustrating. I think a lot of people will say, well, I don't, we don't want to see aid go to Afghanistan because we don't want to give money to the Taliban that's an extremist group. So you want to make 38 million people suffer because of a few thousand? I, th that math doesn't work for me. That math doesn't work for me. By the way, the solution to this is, I mean, I don't know how, uh, I don't know if this could actually happen or not, but the solution for this would be unironically to uh, allow China to step in. That's it. That's just like, Afghan is very mineral rich. Um, we've known about it since uh, the Cold War. Yeah, let China come in and uh, help the people of Afghanistan. 
China is literally no better. Well, so far they haven't uh, done a 20 year brutal occupation campaign. So they are literally better. Okay. They are literally currently better. How are they currently better? Well, because they haven't done a 20 year brutal occupation campaign, which ended up with them uh, seizing, which ended up with them handing the keys of the castle to the militant group that rose as a reaction from all of the actions that we had engaged in against the USSR in the country prior to the 20 year military occupation. And then also on top of that, stop saying Tibet, I'm talking about Taiwan. You think Taiwan is comparable to Afghanistan? Are you out of your mind? God damn, bro. Liberalism is a diagnosable mental disorder. Okay? Straight up. Straight up. Yeah, dude. Oh, my God. Oh, imagine if China does Taiwan to Afghanistan in comparison to uh, what? Uh, uh, what America has done to Afghanistan? Yeah, dude. You know what? Motherfucker be literally building statues to Top G if China did to Afghanistan what it did to Taiwan in comparison to what America has done to Afghanistan. Do you understand? And then you'd be screaming. You'd be like, oh my God, we need to reinvade Afghanistan. It's becoming a serious problem for, for um, American uh, hegemonic power. Literally let any other country try because you can't get much worse than the Americans. Yo, no, literally, like literally, you can't. That argument is completely broken when you look at the foreign aid budget, which is a big chunk going to Israel, which is a terrorist apartheid state. Yeah, I mean, that's not, we're not even talking about that.